Hello, this is Trinon, and welcome to part 3 of Let's Play Torchlight. One thing of note is that after beating Brink, we will have unlocked waypoints, or set portals distributed between every five levels of the dungeon. I'm a bit overwhelmed, friend. Brink is dead, my master is lost, and I feel responsible for your corruption as well. Somehow the blighted ember is fusing with your flesh, changing it. But at least the progress is slow. I have some knowledge of the crypts below the mine. The Overseer experimented with methods of purifying Gamma. We may be able to use his knowledge to purge the corruption from you now. Find the Overseer's library. His notes should be there. Our next part in the main storyline is to cure our corruption caused by Alric's beam thing. Before we continue downwards, however, Maybe now is a good time to explain how the stat system in this game works. The four stats you have are Strength, which determines your melee damage, Dexterity, for ranged, Magic damage uses Magic, which we focus on, and Defense, which is Armor, which is also important in very hard mode. Similar to Armor are Resistances, which deflect elemental damage. The skill tree has two types of skills, passive and active. There are also three tabs for three different sections of skills. The skills I will be focusing on are going to be minion based. My goal is to be summoning a very strong set of monsters and basically have an army following me the entire time while I take pot shots at enemies with my wands. It is time to venture forward. The miners chipped their way down through the rock, unaware of the tombs below. When they finally break through, I hope they are wise enough to flee, collapsing their tunnels behind them. This vault was rightly sealed. It was an experiment as ill-fated as my own. Their ancestors are animated not with life, but with the same dark energy that flows through the ember veins. Separating out the vileness is impossible. Immortality lies forever beyond our reach. I was a fool to think otherwise. Welcome to the next area of the game, the Tomb of the Awakened. This area is very similar to the side quest we were taking on. A new enemy type to be found here is the Rotted Chanter, who will shoot fireballs and resurrect skeletons. The Rotted Chanter is at its strongest when it has a swarm of skeletons shielding its position. If you see them in a group, it's probably a good idea to take them down first. Your pet is Your pet has fled. The next new enemy type we'll encounter is a Construct. Constructs work very similar to the Rock Trolls. They're big enemies that take a lot of damage, that do knockback attacks, and generally are heavy hitters. Again, my strategy here will be to summon a bunch of minions to fight at my side. Their main goal is to be a meat shield while I deal damage at a distance. One drawback of these minions is that they require corpses nearby to be consumed in order to be summoned. As you can see, my strategy here is working fairly effectively. My minions are taking the brunt of the damage while I'm dealing ranged damage from afar. By the way, the Ember MacGuffin collecting is still a thing. The enemy whom I have the most concern about in this area are the basic skeletons. The simple issue is that they move very fast, and that doesn't give me a lot of time to run away and let my minions take the damage. In fact, they seem to target me specifically, and this is kind of frustrating. This moving bridge is indicative of another feature of this area. The Tomb of the Awakened uses a lot of lever gimmicks to cross gaps or open portcullis, and so on. Every once in a while you will encounter phase beasts. Phase beasts are creatures that when killed will create a portal leading to a secret level.
portal areas tend to be harder than normal areas. They may do mean things like, say, close the door in front of you and surround you with skeletons in a small room. Remember how I said that the trick to staying alive in hard mode is to remember when to heal? I kind of forgot to heal. Thankfully, dying in Torchlight except in hardcore mode is not too much of a problem. Here, I can resurrect at the start of the entrance and only lose a few bit of gold. I could also have decided to resurrect exactly where I stood at the start of the entrance and have lost experience and fame, or if I didn't want to lose anything, could have resurrected at town and lost nothing except progress. Did I mention that I hate these skeletons yet? I kind of hate these skeletons. In fact, I was lucky enough to record the sound I made when I died to these skeletons. I may be over-exaggerating a little bit. Although this secret level looks like the area I left from, what the area inside a portal will look like varies from portal to portal. The phase beast I killed could have easily have just led to a mineshaft as much as it could have led to catacombs. I actually got stuck in this room for quite some time until I figured out there was a hidden lever past all of the monsters I killed. Well, there it is. I just hope nothing unexpected happens or else I might get scared. Yeah! Portal areas are kind of a high-risk, high-reward scenario, where they have difficult encounters, but tend to reward a bunch of loot stashes like these. And they're relatively short as well, which is always nice. The only problem with the portal areas is that you cannot send your pet back to town, and if you leave the portal area, it closes forever. So, make sure you have some inventory space. There are a few things left to attend to before we head down to the next floor. Item rarity is denoted by color. White is common, green is uncommon, blue is rare, and orange is unique. Here I grab a unique mace, my first unique item of the game, and since it's a melee weapon I have absolutely no use for it. Oh well, I thought I'd show it off anyways. Also I killed the quest monster. Yay. So up till now, the game has been relatively easy, but that's all soon to change as we approach the next bridge, and we will find a huge, terrible, terrifying... Just kidding, we're here. Well, let's head on down. I can't carry anymore. What was that? My pack is full. Shit, you're right. I better hurry up and make an inventory montage. Good day. Hail. Hello there. Hi there. I got things to do. Good day to you. Shoo! Off with you. Bye! What can I do for you? Greetings. You have gained a task. You have begun a new quest. Okay, enough of that. Back to the game. Notice in the top right part of the screen that the name of this level is not something like Tomb of the Awakened Level 7, but is Lair of the Sisters. That is indicative that we are probably in an area with a boss. Unlike the first boss floor, however, the Lair of the Sisters has a full dungeon in it, including flaming statues, or whatever these are. This area is still very similar to all of the Tomb of the Awakened areas before it, though. It still has skeletons, it still has chanters, it still has all of the normal stuff you expect. Oh hey look, a face portal! <laughs> so after killing lots and lots of enemies, we arrive at this strange room. There may have been some of this in between. Anyways, here's the Journal of the Overseer. Maybe it'll help us. The Council has ordered the Necropolis sealed. 
I could purge the corruption from the Awakened with a little more time. But they will not listen. They call the Embers effect a curse and feign concern for the peaceful rest of our ancestors. But fear alone guides them. If the Council refuses to accept the blessings of eternal life, we will keep the Ember for ourselves. Woe to any who disturb our sanctuary! This place is called the Lair of the Sisters for a reason, and that would be these three spectral sisters. They don't really do much with my character, even on very hard mode. As you can see, they go down pretty fast. Um, just wander around like I usually do with my characters, and let my minions do all of the work. While there certainly are fights in Torchlight on very hard that are actually hard, this is not one of them. And this was a mini boss. One thing of note now is that I have an alchemical golem. The alchemical golem is kind of like the nether imps in that it's a minion, but there's always only one of it, and it generally is tougher and stronger than those little imps are. That's about it. Oh shit, not another face portal. might be a good time to talk about some of the issues people have with Torchlight. There are two big ones that come to mind. The first is its repetitive nature, and the second is that it's hard to go through the whole game because of this repetitive nature. In response to the first part, I think the game is less about enjoying new content all the time, and more about a casual play and going through a flow of a game and playing leisurely and not dead set on grinding through the entire game in one sitting. If you do that, you will get burnt out. And that is part of the problem with the game, that it is very addicting, but at the same time, it's not very refreshing. So it's very easy to strain yourself with this game, and my advice is to pace your play and, in general, just try to enjoy the moment and not where you're going, or else you'll be distraught at how slow it's taking to get there. Thankfully, I've cut out most of this run, so you don't have to wait. So it's not floor 9 or floor 10 that is a boss floor, it's floor 8? I'm not sure I understand why. But hey, this is the boss room, there's some stuff we have to fight first, but that's easily taken care of. We soon come across a empty arena with several braziers. If you light these pots, then something happens. I wonder what it could be. So you know how I said that the mini-boss wasn't that hard? Unfortunately, the Overseer is a little bit more challenging. The main reason is not necessarily because he teleports, not necessarily because he shoots tons of projectiles, but really because he summons hordes and hordes of very fast-moving undead, and this can be quite a challenge to keep them from attacking me in particular. 
my swarms of friends are kind of short-handed at the moment because a lot of these summoned enemies disappear instead of leaving their corpses behind, which is the primary method I summon creatures. So, other than that, the Overseer is fairly needy to soaks up a lot of damage. And, yeah, really the biggest part of this fight is keeping away from the hordes of undead he summons. He's not really much of a fight of himself, but hey, as the alchemist who summons minions of undead himself, who am I to talk? The one good part about this fight is that I am in a very open space. This can let me dodge these guys very easily, even though they move about as fast as I do, if not faster. The Overseer, like I said, is not a problem. My minions can eat him up, and I can shoot him on at leisure. The Hordes of Undead, as far as dealing with them, it's just a matter of kiting, or keep away, and thankfully I picked up a frost missile on the way here, and that can let me slow some of these faster creatures. Yeah, well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that's finally over. Oh wait, we still have hordes of undead to deal with. At least they don't keep respawning now. Ugh. Ugh. You've released the Overseer from his madness. Now we can investigate his library. Ah, here are his notes. He mentions searching for an ember forge in a dwarven fortress, much deeper in this mountain. He believed it would cleanse the corruption from his awakened ancestors. I will return here another time to learn more, but this ember forge sounds promising. Come, let's go further down. We may not have much time. And that concludes this part. Next time, we'll go deeper down and try to find this Ember Forge.